it's been a few months since the whole Audacity drama where the project was purchased by Muse Group. They added a CLA to the project, a contributor license agreement, where anyone who signed it would basically be signing away all of their rights to the code. And then they had the audacity to add in telemetry to the project. This caused basically everybody who cares about free software and open source software to get kind of angry about it, leave the project, and two forks actually arose from all of the fires. Those forks being Audacium and Tenacity. Now, other forks did exist, like Sneedacity, but Sneedacity was just a meme, and nobody cared about it after a couple of days. So this right here is Audacium, and this right here is Tenacity. Now, given all the time between the drama and now, I wanted to go and check out these projects and see if there's a reason why you actually might want to go and use them. Instead of just, you know, going and downloading an older version of Audacity prior to Muse Group actually purchasing the project. Now, I went into these projects not looking at the repos whatsoever, just downloading them and seeing what they were like. And I'd sort of expected quite a bit of work to actually be done because one of the big problems that Audacity does have is Audacity's UI is... it's it's terrible. It's honestly terrible. Like, I know how to use it because I've used Audacity for quite a while, but if we're talking about making Audacity an easy-to-use application that people actually want to use... That's one of the things that Muse Group actually is doing fairly well. They're doing a whole redesign of it, and I think it's actually a big improvement. As for these projects, though, we have a dark theme. Now, the dark theme is something people have been asking for from Audacity for a very, very long time. There's literally a fork for Audacity called Dark Audacity just to add in a dark theme, so it is definitely an improvement, but I don't really like the Audacium version, especially when you put it right next to the Tenacity version, this version looks considerably more cleaner. The one advantage that Audacium does have though, is if we go into the preferences, go down to interface and go to the theme, there is a lot more options, and if you want to use the Dark Audacity theme, that version actually is here as well. I'm not a big fan of this one, but hey, it's certainly a dark theme. If you're going to make me choose between one or the other, though, I feel like they should just drop the dark themes they have here and just adopt the one that Tenacity has. Speaking of Tenacity, it doesn't have a bunch of different versions of the dark theme. If you want to use the dark theme, you have the dark theme. If you don't want to use the dark theme, there are other themes you can use instead. Now, the reason I'm mainly focusing on the theme is because right now, that's really the only main user-facing change that was made. There is some slight changes with the default interface layout, like these modules you can move around, and they've been moved to different locations between Tenacity and Audacium, but that's basically it. Like, the dark theme is a good addition, but as for redesigns of different features, from what I can tell, they don't seem to be there, but I had to go and check back with the GitHub repo to see if I was missing something. So this is the Audacium commit history, and scrolling through this, you're going to start noticing a theme. Most of the changes in here are very minor changes. So things like adding in a translation, that's great. That's a great change to have. Adding in minor, minor patches that are changing like a couple of lines dealing with some typos, dealing with some bug fixes, and sort of ironing out the code base, but nothing really big that is going to be noticeable by the user. Just getting the code base into a state where it's actually productive to work through, and also a lot of changes to the readme and other documentation associated with the application outside of the application itself. And the exact same is true for Tenacity as well. Updating sub-modules, making minor couple line changes, updating the readme, dealing with a lot of bugs that were there or missing tool tips and labels and things like that. But nothing like, hey, we had this missing effect and we've made this effect from the ground up or something like that. Most of it is just minor things to iron out the code base to make it easier to work with into the future and dealing with bugs that maybe hadn't been addressed for a very, very long time. I'm sure if I checked every single drop-down list and compared them between Tenacity, Audacium, and Audacity, I would find something that was added in one of the new additions, but there's nothing here that 
I would use in my workflow that's actually changed. And I don't do anything super advanced, just general YouTuber-y stuff with messing with audio. But if I'm not going to spot anything like that, unless you're doing some really advanced stuff, I can't imagine you're actually going to notice any changes that have been done, at least at this stage. But the elephant in the room is the maintenance. So because both these forked off a larger project, and not everyone who is actually working on Audacity left that project, these forks see basically minimal maintenance, but the code base isn't actually any smaller. So in the case of Tenacity, prior to a couple of days ago, the last patch was in November. So there was a two month gap between the patches that were here and the previous patch before that was in October. Uh, Audacium does get a little bit more maintenance, but the patches you see here in many cases aren't related to code and in other cases are a lot more minor patches. And this is because the teams that actually work on these projects are really, really small. There seems to be maybe three or four people who consistently work on Tenacity and Audacium, a lot of the work seems just be done by like one or two people. There's like occasionally another person here, but there's one main developer. And that would be fine if Audacium and Tenacity were at the scale of something like Vim, for example. Vim isn't a small project by any means, but it's considerably smaller than something like Audacity is. With a project like this, though, with a project that is notoriously hard to maintain, I can totally understand why there hasn't been a consistent maintenance cycle when there's so few people who are actually working on it. Now, even though from a user perspective, I feel like Tenacity is in a much, much better state with the way the theme is, and actually that's basically it, with the way the theme is, Tenacity isn't actually claiming that this is a release build of the application. This is something they're ready to say is their 1.0 version. They specifically say, we have not released the first version of Tenacity yet, as it's still in early stages of development. The Audacium side, though, they specifically say the version from December is their release build. And the version from December was basically Audacity but with a dark theme and a logo change, and that's all. Now, that's not to say that either of them are buggy and you shouldn't go and use them, but if you're going to call something a release build of an application, and it's a fork of another application, I would generally expect there to be more development done here than what we have seen so far. So at the end of the day, should you go and download Audacium and Tenacity, or just go and download an older version of Audacity and be happy with what that is? Because that version is also just not going to have a CLA, but there's also going to be no one actually developing it. Whereas with these forks, even though there's not many people developing it, you're still getting some level of development. And maybe over time, if the forks do actually grow and they do iron out the code base, new features actually will be added. Maybe they'll redesign the interface and it'll actually become a good piece of software alongside Audacity. Honestly, if you like the way that Audacity currently works and you want Audacity to have a dark theme, then yeah, it's perfectly fine and it's going to do what you need it to do. But if you want to have a version of Audacity that is going to have a lot more development, tons of new features added, all of that fun stuff, I don't think in the state they're currently in, they're really ready to actually do that. That might change in the future, but at least right now, the maintenance isn't really there. So if you want to try these out, both of them are available on the AUR, but if you're not an Arch Linux user, actually, even if you are an Arch Linux user, I'd recommend going and using the Flatpak version for Tenacity or the app image for Audacium, because compiling both of these applications is not a fun experience. And in the Tenacity case, even on my system, it takes about 50 minutes. Also, one thing to note about Audacium, if you do use the AUR package, for whatever reason, the person who made it made it so it conflicts with the main Audacity package, so you can't easily have them both installed at the same time. The Tenacity package doesn't have that issue. There's no technical reason that conflict actually needs to be there. They just want to go and force you to uninstall Audacity. But it is what it is, and for me, 
I'm probably just going to keep Tenacity around just because I think it has a better dark theme. If Tenacity's maintenance completely drops off, I guess I'll just move over to Audacium instead. If you go into either of these applications, basically expecting what VS Codium is to VS Code, you will be content. If you don't know what that is, VS Codium is VS Code minus the Microsoft telemetry stuff, and that's all. Nothing else changes, and that's pretty much what these are, even though the versions of Audacity that we use on Linux are the older versions because the new versions are a pain to compile, and basically no distro shipped them anyway. If you know your way around C and C++, I really encourage you to go and work on these projects and make them actually be reasonable forks. I don't know C, so that's not a job for me, but I can at least promote it. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Are you working on Tenacity and Audacium? Do you think they actually have a much brighter future than I think they do right now? Or maybe you want to go and try these projects out and see if there actually is a lot of changes that maybe you do care about. I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to go and support the channel, become one of these amazing people over here, I've got a Patreon, subscribe to Johnny Pay linked in my description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T, a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. And that's going to be it for me. So I'm out.